I want to do a real quick intro here to this video. Um, guy I know from years past, this video came out in 2010, then his channel was taken down. But uh, he did this video. This guy here is a Baptist pastor and very much heavily involved in military intelligence, uh, showing how these people infiltrate Bible believing circles and uh, basically, you know, are spies, essentially. And this is what I've been talking about for a long time with Jesuits and things and military intelligence spooks and things like that. Uh, so I just want to do a real quick introduction to this video and I'll play this video and uh, it's pretty interesting information here. So check it out. Paranoia video here. This photographer Ernst Withers doubled as FBI informant to spy on civil rights movement. Everybody thought he was marching with the king, you know, up and down for civil rights, but in reality he was just spying for the FBI. Government infiltrated anti-war groups before FBI raids. Karen Sullivan had access to their uh, bookkeeping, financial records, membership lists. She had a key to the office and she was a spy for the government while this group was basically just exercising their democratic rights to protest. Tension grows between California Muslims and the FBI after informant infiltrates a mosque. Now that's a religious uh, congregation and they sent an, F an informant into that group to try to uh, entrap people into admitting that they were terrorists or something. The guy made $177,000 being an informant, a lot of money, and it turns out that all the cases that he tried to develop were, were not true. Um, this is a report by the Inspector General. It turns out FBI ignores informant rules. These are guidelines so that they won't cross the line with illegal activity, but it turns out almost nine times out of ten they are breaking the rules. In fact, this is the one, it says, doctors and clergy are among the informants. In fact, lawyers, doctors, and clergy, they're supposed to keep their dealings with clients confidential. However, some of them are informants. FBI spokesman Ed Cogswell said the Bureau would not identify whether any of its informants are clergy or members of the media. We can use them, and if a need presents, I'm sure we do, Cogswell said, but we do not want to identify what our sources are. You could be talking to your pastor and find out that actually the guy is an informant. And back, you know, at the time when the the uh, government files some report against you, some indictment, and uh, then you'll realize. KSLA 12, Homeland Security enlists clergy to quell public unrest if martial law is ever declared. You remember this from a couple years back? They also had a news broadcast of the same thing. This is the clergy response teams that would go into the public and say, give up your guns, cooperate with martial law, the Constitution is over, however, uh, you have to cooperate with the illegal government that's taken over. And uh, this could be your pastor. This could be high-level people, I mean, people who are the Christian celebrities who could get on board with this. This is Pastor Dixon's article. It's official. Preachers to be used as Judas goats for FEMA. And he gives the analogy of the Judas goats, a goat that leads the other sheep to slaughter. And the other sheep follow it, thinking that, it, uh, you know, that it's the leader. And they go behind, and of course, they spare the Judas goat, and all the other sheep get slaughtered. Our, it goes on here. We know that many pastors came forth after the Hitler and Stalinist regimes and confessed that they had been double agents. While they had served their congregations in their pastoral duties, they at the same time served their socialist and communist masters as spies on their own flocks. We now have the well-established documentation that a communist was the senior pastor of the First Baptist Church of Moscow and associate pastors who were communists served communion, baptized converts, and performed marriages. 
why should we be surprised that they have infiltrated even our fundamentalist Baptist churches here in America? That's kind of scary. That's uh, scary to think about our government doing that. However, nine times out of the ten, they're already breaking their own rules. And there seems to be the rationale that because of terrorism, all rules are off and the government can do whatever it wants to fight terrorism. Uh, Orange County Register, Baptist pastor starting a new church in town. Now, news media doesn't normally give people good coverage, but they gave this guy glowing report in the media to begin his uh, ministry. That's kind of the red flag at the beginning here. But turns out the guy is also a U.S. Air Force officer, or was, at the Defense Language Institute. He learned Persian, and that's where his wife is, who serves with him. And he was an intelligence officer. Built and managed a national award-winning operation security program. Doesn't say what it was and what the award was. Turns out the award was Deception Officer of the Year. He led anti-terrorism operations at a forward Middle Eastern air base after 9-11 and supported national level intelligence operations. And it's in Texas, Maryland, and Idaho. So domestic anti-terrorism operations after 9-11. And everybody should know by now, hopefully, that 9-11 was a fraud, a false flag operation by our own government. This guy is a deception officer of the year in the U.S. military during this time frame. In 2001, God started working in Pastor Gokin's heart about serving in the ministry. So after 2001, he goes, he gets his uh, minister, ministerial degrees, a divinity degree, and he serves with the largest Bible Baptist, Bible-believing Baptist churches in the Northwest, Rick DeMichael's church. Now, What's interesting is while this guy's running this church that he just started uh, a couple of years ago or last year, he has a business that he's running. It's called Factor Security and Continuity. Continuity means after everybody's on the FEMA bus or everybody died because of swine flu, he will help you if you hire him as your consultant, he'll hire you, he will um, provide you the resources to keep your business operating. In other words, you can make a lot of money even after the uh, swine flu has killed everybody. Our groundbreaking re approach to security and business continuity transforms these functions from cost centers to vital parts of your bottom line success. Continuity. Um, now, maybe he's just, you know, running a business and nothing wrong with a guy making money in a business, but this guy's a pastor at the exact same time he's doing this. They did an ad for a person that they wanted. They wanted to hire somebody. This is a, a listing on OS Info, Open Sources Information. I guess this is a ad that they were able to glean off something or other. The person they want has 10 years intelligence community experience, all phases of intelligence cycle, social engineering methodology and practice, human intelligence, and active security clearance, a plus for government contracts. So this guy has government contracts that he has in his factor security. Aaron Gelkin here, factor security has contracts with the government and he's involved in human intelligence and he's hiring people as uh, analysts for him at his factor company. Let's read his bio. Aaron Gelkin's the president and it turns out he managed all aspects of the operation security process during his 12-year military career. Additionally, the Air Combat Command recognized Mr. Gelkin as its military deception officer in the year 2003. Military deception is part of public intelligence information. Military deception. What, are the, what does military deception do? Deliberately prevents misleading information to adversaries 
or deliberately presents misleading information to adversaries to degrade the accuracy of adversary information. So he's lying to people, to your adversary. Seek to give adversary decision makers a false sense of completeness about friendly forces or intention may cause the adversary to misjudge the relevance of available information and misallocate operational or intelligence resources. Functions of mil deck, that's military deception, uh, causing ambiguity, confusion, or misunderstanding in adversary perceptions of friendly critical information. All this junk. Well, basically, they're just liars involved in scams against uh, p the public or whoever. Well, I don't want to say that the guy's a bad guy. I mean, my problem is the fact that he's running this defense institute or this. Uh, what is it, a consulting company that obviously has some ties or are going to make a lot of money when the pandemic hits or when the nuclear bomb goes off. The guy's going to be a very wealthy man with his business on the side. And then in the meantime, he's running a what he calls a Bible Baptist church, and he's, and he's actively the pastor of it. He's, he's got government contracts, high security, and he's involved with military deception, intelligence. And that's Part of it is the PSYOPs, is related to PSYOPs. So when this whole thing transpires that they need the Judas goats, I mean, this a guy like this would have a unique qualification to be at the head of the pack. I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just presenting information that's public information that I got off the Internet. And he, for all I know, the guy's a great guy, and he's just uh, just involved in some very suspicious activities and nothing more. Yeah.